you've got to understand like these people would actually spend hours of their real life to do something like this like what kind of person what how, how do you sleep at night how do you look at how, look at yourself in the mirror and like and, and still wake up in the morning being proud of yourself that's that's incredible honestly it it this situation is like nothing we've ever seen before um yeah it, it's very like, very he, unique he might surpass blue for yeah, like the for worst sure. cheating scandal of all time the mazar story was an elaborate cheating affair on smogon that involved a double kick to Rakion, the 2017 smogon premier league season getting nullified and a fundamental change to pokemon showdown smogon is a de facto authority on singles pokemon and games are played on pokemon showdown a battling simulator where the in-game battles are replicated perfectly Breeding Pokemon is extremely time consuming and tedious and using a simulator lets you skip that and focus on the actual battling part of competitive Pokemon. In 2017, Mazar was having an unusually good year in Smogon Premier League, one of the more elite tournaments where you play on a team with other players in a variety of different formats like Gen 1 or Gen 7. In competitive singles Pokemon tournaments, it is player versus player and people often build new teams for each match, which takes place once a week. Teams are not public and it means the prize factor is important and it can make or break a game. Busting out a new never before seen tactic or idea can change the game completely and most people spend the week preparing a new team instead of reusing an old one. This is different from other tournaments like VGC where you have to submit your team beforehand. This is different from playing in game where you can look up the Elite Force Pokemon. You can't simply look up your opponent's team when it's another human being who's also making decisions about what team to bring. You can prepare for opponents by looking up their past games and what Pokemon they like to use and how they like to play, but that's about it. But what was unusual about the season was the way Mazar was winning. It almost felt like every game he was having the perfect team for each matchup. This isn't necessarily a big deal. People get good team matchups all the time. Maybe they have a good grasp of the trends of the metagame. Maybe they really analyzed their opponent's tendencies and found a pattern they could act on. Maybe they just got lucky. A good matchup can be explained just by the variance that is innate to Pokemon and team building. But for Mazar, it was happening really often, and once they started playing Ubers, a tier where you can use the most powerful Pokemon banned from standard play, Mazar was running away with it. In one game, Mazar had an ingrain rest Z Geomancy Xerneas with Reflect Support. That moveset happened to completely beat his opponent's team. No real hope at all. Ingrain means it can't be roared away, Z Geomancy gives it a defense boost, and Rest means Toxic doesn't work. Basically, Mazar brought an interesting new tactic and it worked perfectly. Sometimes that happens, it's Pokemon. Then, in the next week versus a stall team, he brings a very unusual stall killer. Whirlpool pairs Song Arceus Dark to act as a trapper and killer. Whirlpool prevents the opponent from switching, and when you use Parish Song, you switch out at the last moment while your opponent cannot, and you get the KO. Trapping strategies work well against defensive teams because they won't do enough damage to you in the three turns of Parish Song to make you want to switch out early. Yet another decisive team pick from Mazar, and he gets another easy win. Later, in the semifinals, he uses an Endure, Reversal, Baton Pass Blaziken to knock out Zygarde, and then Baton Pass out to Primal Groudon. Blaziken is not a very common Pokemon at all in the Uberus tier because it's not consistent and would definitely be considered a risky matchup, especially to bring it in a semifinals game. Mazar would actually end up getting unlucky in the game too, but the damage was already done and Mazar would continue to dominate the rest of the game and pick up the win. Mazar and his team, the Tigers, would end up dominating the season too, and he finished 6-0 while playing Uberus that season. His team even made the finals of the tournament. In the finals of the tournament against Gunnar Rohan, Mazar used a stall team. Gunnar Rohan's team had nothing that could break Mazar's team and it was basically unbeatable, leading to a finals victory. As it happened, the finals ended in a tie, which meant that they would play in a final best of three tiebreaker, where there's one neutral tier and each team can pick one tier for the tiebreaker. Mazar's team obviously picked Uber so that Mazar could play in the best of three because he was having an incredible season. That matched him up versus Gunnar Rohan again for the third time that season. This time in the ultimate winner take all. It was 1 in 1 in the best of 3 and whoever won game 3 would win the entire championship. Basically, this was the most important game of the season. 
As you might predict, Mazar effortlessly demolished Gunnar Rohan to win the championship. A crowning moment for an incredible season. But people aren't stupid. A lot of people didn't notice too much and they just thought Mazar was a god. He was making the right moves and picking the right teams. But if you took a deeper look, or maybe you knew a little bit more about Ubers, you would notice that something wasn't quite right. Mazar's team choices were supernaturally good. Maybe you could get an amazing matchup once or twice, but you start raising eyebrows when it happens that often and that brutally. Some of the matchups were literally unplayable. Even before the finals, people could figure out that something was going on, and it wasn't just Mazar. But there was another character in the story, a person known as the Trap God or TTG. TTG was also getting really good matchups. In a now infamous game, he brought a double kick to Rakion versus a Focus Ash Smeargle team. Double kick's goal is to break Focus Ash, but because it's a weak move, the only Pokemon that it hits well enough is Smeargle. Basically, in an Uber's game full of legendary Pokemon, he brought a Pokemon tailored to beat Smeargle and his opponent happened to bring it. By the time the finals rolled around, some people had at least some level of suspicion, but no one really knew what was happening. There was no evidence, nothing to really point at, besides the fact that the matchups were great. The obvious answer would be, what if someone on the roster is leaking the team? But that wouldn't make sense because Mazar was getting good matchups versus everybody, not just one team. There's surely not a leaker on every single team ready to give Mazar information. And that's how it ended, with no evidence. People pushed for their own investigations, whatever that means, but nothing really materialized. The tournament ended in April of 2017, with Mazar and the Tigers as winners of the entire tournament. Well, until October 2017. In a complete coincidence, someone else who was also accused of cheating and unrelated stuff decided to come clean and they gave their Discord account and password to the tournament directors. In that Discord account, they also happened to find chat logs of that person with Mazar. The information from those chat logs were with the help of Pokemon Showdown admins cross-checked and when Mazar was grilled about the contents of those logs, he revealed everything. He was using a bot. Basically, back in the Stone Age, all matches were public by default, but you could make a game private in a split second by using a command after the game starts. Moreover, Pokemon Showdown displays a log of who joins your games. Obviously, people test their new teams before bringing it to a big tournament. People don't test on the Pokemon Showdown ladder because it's too risky. Even on an alt account, someone might remember a team they fought on the ladder and your team could not be secret anymore. Most people test teams with their teammates or friends in private challenge games. Mazar used a bot that could enter every single game including private games. He had it constantly running, and with the speed of the bot, it could enter a game before you could private it. More importantly though, he did it using guest accounts on Pokemon Showdown. If you joined a game as a guest account, your name wouldn't show up in the log because you didn't have a name yet. You were a guest and you hadn't made your username yet. The Mazar bot, as it's called now, would join every single game on the Pokemon Showdown server and save the game. That means if you had at any point tested your team, Mazar would have it. Using this information, he would craft the perfect unbeatable team for the matchup. He would always have the team version that you last tested with. The bot was absurd because it was getting information that was thought to be 100% private. Of course, if people knew there was a magic bot watching every game, they would use alternate accounts even when playing with friends but no one knew this type of bot could even exist. A last minute team switch would throw off the bot strategy too, but you wouldn't randomly switch out the team you've been testing with all week unless you could even fathom the existence of a magic bot. Most people were looking at human forms of cheating, like leaking a team, so they were only testing with people they could 1000% trust, but at the end of the day, they were still testing their teams. Incidentally, the one flaw of the bot was that it wouldn't work on the OU tier which is standard play because the raw number of games was too much. That might explain how he started the season 1-2 in OU before finishing undefeated in Ubers. He was also using the bot to help his teammates. He couldn't tell his teammates he had a bot that could get the opponent's team, but he could offer advice. He could say stuff like, hey, 
I think X is a good Pokemon versus your opponent, I noticed a trend and his teams are weak to it. Undoubtedly, Mazar was able to elevate his teammates too. The whole situation caused chaos for the tournament which finished months ago. You can't redo everything because it affected a lot of teams throughout the season. For example, it wouldn't make sense to award the trophy to the other finalist team because the Tigers only reached the finals in the first place because of Mazar. Without Mazar, there would have been a different team in the playoffs and the entire bracket would have been different. Ultimately, they decided to just nullify the result of the tournament and declare it no winner. Mazar would get permanently banned, and TTG was never actually caught, but with the double kick Terrakion, everyone knows he was in on it, so he's essentially exiled, just not literally banned. Pokemon Showdown would also change their security. As of now, you have a checkbox where you can decide whether or not you want to play a game publicly or privately before you even start the game. Gunnar Rohan, who had his team stolen four times that season, made a video from his own point of view which you can find in the description below. Mazar was not even the inventor of the bot, some of his friends did. He was more of a useful idiot who was friends with the right people. In fact, it's a commonly held belief that if he didn't create the most obscenely lopsided matchups of all time, no one would have even suspected anything in the first place. But that's the way it goes sometimes and it resulted in one of the two biggest cheating scandals in competitive Pokemon history.